and this is episode 35 of the Lifestyle Entrepreneur Podcast. And my next guest is Paul Mort, who is absolutely a riot to interview. You're going to get a ton of great content from this podcast. He's really fired up and he gets me going on a rant inside the podcast as well. So stay tuned for that. Paul's the anti-professional fitness formula expert. So he can help you if you're a fitness back expert, how to actually really create a thriving business, stand out from the pack and start to monetize your expertise. And he's also going to give great tips on email marketing and some great ninja strategies that are different than what everybody else is talking about online. And I'd love for you to tweet me at K-R-I-S- G-I-L-B-E-R-T-S-O-N. So my Twitter handle is at Chris Gilbertson, Chris with a K. And I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this strategy. I find it very uh, unique and interesting, and I want to get your feedback. So tweet me at Chris Gilbertson and tell me what you think on this podcast episode. Let's get started. Welcome to the Lifestyle Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Gilbertson, and I'm an author, speaker, and a coach to teaching you how to launch your own successful podcast. And the reason I designed this show is to bring you the top lifestyle entrepreneur experts from all over the world for them to share their key strategies that they've used to launch their own businesses and allow them to live life on their own terms. So tune in every Friday for new episodes and come on over and join the Lifestyle Entrepreneur community at www.lifestyleacademy.com. There you're going to receive VIP training from specific guests from the podcast, along with being able to watch all of the interviews. And I'll also be making it really easy for you to implement these strategies that you're hearing by sending you what I like to call the Lifestyle Cliff Notes on the best of the best lessons learned on the podcast. So let's get started. All right. So before we get started with the show, I just want to thank everyone who is subscribing and leaving awesome reviews in iTunes. I'm so excited that people are enjoying these interviews and I'm excited to announce first Fridays. So what I'm going to be doing the first Friday of every month, we're going to have a raffle for ever, for those of you that have subscribed to the podcast and then also left a review and it'll be a raffle for $25 gift cards from iTunes, Amazon, eBay, all over the place. So all you simply need to do is just subscribe to the podcast and iTunes and then leave us a review and your name will go in a hat and we'll announce that the first Friday of every month. And this week's loyal listener shout out is also the winner of the first Friday's raffle. And to claim that, simply tweet me at Chris Gilbertson, that's K-R-I-S-G-I-L-B-E-R-T-S-O-N. We'll get in touch with my team and get you out your gift card ASAP. And today's loyal listener shout out goes out to 412 Sarah. And she says, great info. I love this podcast. I love that when the title says the episode will be about XYZ, the episode actually is about XYZ and not ABC, unlike some other podcasts. I love that there are no interruptions during episodes to advertise other stuff. Chris has a really great conversational style of interviewing her guests that is easy to listen to. And she packs a lot of info into each episode. I've been learning a lot from listening to her and definitely recommend subscribing. Thanks, Chris. Well, thank you so much. 412 Sarah for that awesome shout out. I really appreciate it. I'm so glad you're getting great content. Uh, This is the main reason why I started this show is this is the type of content I wish I had known before I spent $60,000 on all these products and services trying to navigate this crazy ocean when you start marketing online. And so I'm so grateful to hear that. And I am going to keep the show clean. What I mean by that, (laughs) um, I thought it was kind of funny, pun intended there with Paul being our fitness expert of the day. Eat clean, keep your show clean. (laughs) But um, I'm not going to bring sponsors on. I've been tossing around the idea for quite a few months, actually almost over a year now. Right now, I just want to keep it where it's really content based for all the listeners. We have sponsors for our live events and for high touch connection for them, which is always fantastic. That's what I love. But since their shows once a week, I don't want to dilute that for you as the listener, because this is all about you and the content. So again, tweet me at Chris Gilbertson. Uh, You guys can obviously tell I'm starting to get more into Twitter now. So connect with me over there. I'd love to hear what you're liking on the podcast. Any other experts that you you want content that you are struggling with in your business, or you just want to hear from um, that you want help with to help you navigate, like I said, this ocean. So thank you again. And let's get into today's show. 
Well, welcome back, everyone. I am so excited and honored for today's guest. <laughs> He's an absolute riot. His name's Paul Mort, and he was a former fat guy turned fitness entrepreneur. And what's great about Paul is he's turned into a massive business coach now where Paul literally makes money every time he sends an email with this totally anti-professional approach to the fit formula. So he's also an Amazon best-selling author. He's also been ranked as the top 100 most influential personal trainers of all time. He's been featured in men's health, fitness, all over the board. And what's really great that I love about Paul is he's just real. So we're going to get right into it. So Paul, welcome. How are you? I'm super excited. Like literally, if I could sway on your podcast, then I would right now because I'm so freaking excited. <laughs> well, be yourself. I always tell everybody to be who they are. Be authentic. I love it. I will. So uh, let's will. start off. I mean, let's talk about, I mean, I, we have so many questions that we're going to get into today um, just yeah. on how you help people. But first, how did this anti-professional kind of character come about? And, and how okay, did you... Kinda- it, it kind of came about when um, I th- this is I had a bit of a meltdown. I got to a point where I was just exhausted from. I mean, I've been an entrepreneur now for since I was maybe 22, 23, so ten years, and I've always been a little bit of a rebel. And I've worked for some of the well, I've spoke so I've spoken at the biggest fitness conventions in the world, and I was always told you can't say this, you can't say that. Please take your very strange accent off cover your tattoos, take your earrings out, be clean shaven. And just got to a point where I was attracting a lot of people into my business, which at this point was the, the it, this was only maybe a year ago now, two years ago. I was attracting a lot of people into my business who used to drain the life out of me and who used to they'd try and steal my clients, they'd be whiny and they'd, they'd, they'd complain a lot. And I blamed them, but what I realized was that was because I wasn't being my true self, I was attracting these people. So then it just got to a point where I'd love to say it was the, the F word followed by the word it. So F it. I can't do this anymore. And then I just I just basically I started just saying to myself, look, I'm going to have the courage to be myself 100% of the time. And now I attract people who I would, I can't believe pay me money because I would hang out with these guys for free and I repel those people that would not be a good fit just by being myself 100% of the time. Yeah. How did yeah. that how did that make you feel then for your business? It was very scary. Um, like any most most decisions that you have to make in business are scary otherwise there's no point in making them. And I think it was Richard Branson, another fellow Brit said something like the more uncomfortable conversations that you have, the more successful you'll be. But these uncomfortable conversations were with myself. So it was very scary. So yeah, but then when it started to change, I lost a lot of clients to start with, but it was clients who I wanted to lose almost because it got to a point where I felt guilty taking these guys' money because like I say, they were draining me. And now, like I say, the guys who I work with now are an absolute riot. Like you would not believe the stuff that goes on at my events and things like that. Yeah. This, is, I, I love it. It's, it's brilliant because it is, it's those uncomfortable conversations that we have to have. And I think yeah. so many, I know I'm guilty of this. When I first started, I would, I, I'd always try to please everybody. People please yeah. are, oh, I want to yeah. make you happy. I want to make you happy. And it just, yeah. it, it doesn't work. So let's talk about, I mean, you, you had a massive fitness business that you ended up selling, um, yeah. did phenomenal with that. And now you're teaching fitness professionals yeah. how to make money. So let's yeah. talk about your style and what you do and how you got started with that. My style is, again, it, it's kind of what happened was that the business exploded. A lot of people saw me doing it and I kind of stumbled in everybody asking me how I did it. Um, so those two businesses combined for a little while. And then, like I say, I had a meltdown. I sold the business and I can see a lot of people heading down the same route as I am in that the fitness industry is very cutthroat. It's very dog eat dog. Everybody competes on price. Everybody. So my whole thing is, okay, so let's look at the people you're attracting by competing on price. Let's look at how, this is my whole thing. I would be confident of walking into any town and dominating that town just by being a better marketer because everybody, and this is insane, everybody in fitness is copyable. They don't have anything that unique. So the two things for me to be uncopyable, number one, know your customer or your avatar or your target market better than anybody else. That's number one. Number two, just be yourself. That's it. Because I also think that the fitness industry is guilty of being, for want of a better word, everybody is a positive Pete. 
Everybody is motivational Mike. And it's just like, what? Are you guys... Can, can all you guys do is post motivational quotes? <laughs> and pretend that you like broccoli? Everybody <laughs> likes broccoli. So what I'm trying to say is here is that uh, if you... Let's face it, Chris. Most people feel like crap. Most people are tired. Most people are exhausted. Most people are frustrated. And they, they walk around kind of on a drip. A caffeine drip. So... Me, me posting pictures of how hard my workout was doesn't help anybody. What we need to do is, and this is what I teach my guys, is to meet people where they are, not where they we think they want to be. So meet people in their struggle. Everybody's got a story. Everybody's been through struggles. So if we meet the people that we want to help here, there's more chance of us helping them. You know what I mean? It's kind of... It, it, fitness, fitness marketing is intimidating. It, it actually intimidates the very people who we are trying to help it intimidates them because we're posting pictures of people doing a thousand burpees in 10 minutes people vomiting in a in a toilet and say, what? <laughs> yeah it's frightening and, and as somebody i mean i have because i'm a former fat boy, boy i always have problems with my weight always and i've actually lived in spain for three years and moving from england to spain is like chris do you know when you go on vacation and you kind of pig out a little bit and in that one week or two weeks, you may gain several pounds. Imagine going on vacation for three years. That's kind of what happened when I moved to Spain. So I'm I'm actually in England right now. And I was looking for a trainer to work with. And I'm looking around and I'm thinking, you know what? I haven't done anything for months here. And I am petrified of starting again. So what we've got to do is take away this intimidation, take away this fear of starting. So yeah, that's my whole marketing thing in, in a nutshell. Yeah. And me, me other thing is, look, if everybody's doing it, it means it's not working because between me and you, Chris, the fitness industry is failing massively. In the UK, the UK is fatter and heavier than it's sicker than it ever has been. Yet the people that can do the most to help it are earning less than what you earn for working in McDonald's. What? The average income for fitness professionals in the UK is 15,000 pounds, which is what you get for working in McDonald's. So no. something is clearly wrong and it's marketing. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. But what we have is we have, I look at somebody and somebody's doing a discount because it's almost Christmas. And I'm seeing everybody doing that. I'm like, look, look, I'm teaching my clients. Look, look at what everybody else is doing and do the opposite. Most great marketers say that. I'm like, because clearly, if everybody's doing it, it's wrong. The majority are wrong. So, yeah. And, and again, the thing with discounts, especially for services, I'm like, what? You got dumber because it's almost Christmas? If you're discounting because it's almost Christmas, you're telling everybody that because it's almost Christmas, you got dumber. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of this. I'm not a fan of discounting whatsoever. I'm I'm just not a fan. I think for products and stuff where it's a digital product, it's cool. But I think for a service where you're swapping your time and expertise for money, as soon as you discount, you start attracting those same people that we don't want. So it, yeah. it, You're so right. And I used to do that in the beginning. With the digital, it's a little bit different. I, yeah. I think that can work. But with consulting, yeah. my fees have just gone up and up and up. Like yeah. I don't go the other way. And I, see, yeah. and I see that too in other professions. People are doing the same thing. They're just hacking. And price... It, it's yeah. exactly what you're talking about. You attract what you're going to yep. put out there. So I and, and I love what you talk about. And thank you for sharing the mindset piece because so much of that I see, and this happens with entrepreneurs too, where, okay, they want to get back in the gym for the first time. They haven't been working out for three years and they're intimidated. They're scared, yeah. you know, and then also the same thing happens with entrepreneurs when, you yeah. know, they're starting their business for the first time. So what are some of the mindset pieces that you can help people? Because they, I think it relates health and fitness and your success. I think they're, yeah. they're very, uh, congruent yeah okay so mindset tips for business what i will say about prices is this somebody has to be the most expensive in your town so why not you that's my whole somebody has to be the most expensive and the thing is the more expensive you are the less clients you need yes and the better clients you get exactly <laughs> yes so the, less, the more time you have that i'm like people say to me what's the first thing i should do to make more money i'm like double your prices you need, you lose, well, I lose some clients. Well, okay, so you lose half your clients, but you still earn the same amount of money. Exactly. 
And the clients that do stay are the ones that value your advice. So guess what? They're going to listen to what you say. Yep. And they yeah, take that's action. The, that, that's the first thing. So the other thing on mindset, we were talking about this before, is that we're talking about entrepreneurs staying in shape. And I think it's a time thing. It's a time thing. We spend our time spinning plates. And I'm not even going to say outsource here. I'm going to say look at what you do and find out what is the most effective. The problem with most entrepreneurs is we don't know what's effective because we don't track anything. It's why I don't like social media so much. I have a I have a little secret account on Facebook with like eight friends. My other personal account, which is the one I've used for five or six years, has 5,000 friends maximum and I have 3,000 followers. But I wasted a lot of time on there that I couldn't track. And I'm like, okay, does, does Facebook really work for you? Yes, it does. How do you know? Because unless you are using ads, I love Facebook ads. That's why I have another. Pro, that's why I have another account because Facebook ads work. There is no doubt. But if you're using your personal account to try and get clients, you cannot track how effective your time is. So you end up in in groups and forums. And the other thing that I really like is being less accessible. I think it's very attractive. I think being less access, uh, accessible is it shows you have a lot of confidence, and confidence is irresistible. Where most people on Facebook, especially, ooze desperation, being less being less accessible kind of really oozes confidence. It's, I love that stuff. And it kind of makes you, when people do get in contact with you, they appreciate it more, which means that from a positioning point of view, it's awesome. Now, I'm totally going off on a tangent. I love it. It's I good this would happen though. at some point. This is the ADD brain. Um, what I was saying was that, um, and we're going to get onto this, I'm sure, with the email. Um, with the whole tracking your numbers thing, it's all, all the 80 20, 20 rule. If any of the guys that are listening haven't read it, there's a book called The 80 20 Principle, which is Pareto's principle. And I think the guy that wrote it is Richard Koch. I've said his name wrong a few times because we'll you spell get it. it. I can't remember K-O-C-H his name either. C H is how you spell his name. And obviously, that could be said anyway. Yeah, but I'm not going to say that on your podcast, Chris. <laughs> Dirty mouth. <laughs> But yeah, what this what, what this is that 80% of your profits come from 20% of your efforts. 80% of your headaches come from 20% of your clients, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So what my big goal, especially when I had my second child, was to find out where 80% of my profits came from. And it was basically all from email marketing. So now then I then I discovered, okay, so if I get paid more if this is if this isn't the most effective method of me making money. Why shouldn't I? Why don't I do more of it, and then do less of the stuff that doesn't have a very, very big, very big return on investment? So then I discovered email marketing, and yeah, my, now my time thing and the way I can get my exercise in and get everything done is I know that number one, all I have to do is get people to my website. Facebook ads and podcasts are the two very best things I've ever done for that. Um, secondly, I need to make sure I send an email, a very particular type of email, every day. And the third thing I need to do is, because I'm getting paid every day, I need to deliver what I say that I'm going to deliver. So basically, the product, the service, the whatever. Yeah. That's all I have to do. Once that's done, anything else is a bonus. Because I didn't mention before, I also have bipolar. So probably once every two weeks, I have to spend a whole day in bed crying. (laughs) It happens, yeah. Yeah, but, but this is real. This is the stuff that we're all, and, and you've got a family on top of it, which yeah. I just, you know, entrepreneurs with families and kids, I just give you so much props because there's so much that goes into running a business and yeah. then taking care of your health, taking care of your yeah. family, taking care of the little ones. I mean, it's a lot. So I yeah, love Chris, how you- This is one of the reasons that, that you said that. There. This is one of the reasons now why I don't have an office at home anymore because I've got a three-year-old boy and a six-month girl. So the little boy, Max, he keeps coming into the, the, the home office. Daddy, play choo-choos. Daddy, play choo-choos. I'm like, no. And he's like, please, daddy. I'm like, dude, I've got to get an office away from, that, away from the house. But what happens now is from a productivity point of view is I'm like, I'm going to get this done because I want to go home. I don't mess around on Facebook. I don't mess around on Twitter. I'm not watching YouTube videos. I'm getting done what I've got to get done because I want to get home and see my kids. Ugh, I, I I'm love it. I'm huge on productivity now. Yeah. And, and, and that's, uh, <clears throat> oh, it, it's huge. It's so funny. It's like every week I have to readjust where I'm at because I see, oh, yeah. I've wasted so much time here. And, and yeah. I love how you keep it simple. You fo- focus on email marketing 
and you focus on you know what you have to with Facebook, Facebook ads as and your podcast and it, yeah. and it's simple it's not 50 million strategies yeah. it's not all over the place so let's talk about how you um so let's back up for a second because you we, before we were chatting you said you just how long have you been doing the daily email thing the daily emails for about four months. Okay. Yeah. So that was your trigger before when you're like, the, so let's talk about what you send and how you do that. Do you think everybody should be doing a daily, daily email? Yes. Okay. I can't see a business that will not benefit from daily email because um, the reason I like email so much is because it's intimate. It's very intimate. And, and there's only one thing more intimate than an email and that's a podcast. You have somebody's attention. And I'm sure we're keeping their attention now if people can understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. <laughs> but yeah, you have somebody's attention. And in our world of kind of new media and social media, that is so important because the problem with Facebook, you've got a message notification. You've got somebody's liked your photo. Somebody's commented on your status update. You've got your Skype going off. It's crazy. Once I've got your attention in the inbox, then I will, I will keep your attention and I'll sell you something. Now, the emails are never more than 600 words long for that very reason. Because here's what happens, and, and this is what I used to do. I used to email once a week with a really big blog post, great content. I think a lot of people do this, but what I found was that, and I do this as well. Oh, that looks like a great blog post. I'm going to bookmark that and read it later. Guess what happens? Tomorrow never comes. Because I'm going to be like, oh, that's going to take 20 minutes to read. What I do now is 600 words, plain text, cut out the fluff, 600 words, it gets read. Pitch at the end, done. That's uh, that's brilliant yeah. because that's... here's the thing with frequent email as well, Chris. The more the, the more frequent I email, the the my open rate got affected massively as well because really? people now expect a daily email. So when you were changing that up, so when you had yeah. your your traditional thing, because that's what a lot of it is, is do you know one email a week, yeah. um, and, and keep it consistent that way. And I yeah. love the connection though, and that's that really is what where I think things are shifting in the marketplace. The people yeah. that have the best connection power yeah. are who's yeah. winning. It's not about yeah. content. And yep. it's not even about just design anymore. I really think it's about the connection. So um, Chris, I'm plain text, 100% mm -hmm. plain text. Yeah. No graphics, no link back to Facebook. Here's another little nugget. Sending somebody back to Facebook from an email is like having somebody at the checkout or the cash register and sending them in another store. Yeah. That makes sense. I would never, ever in a million years send somebody from an email to Facebook because usually I've worked hard to get them from Facebook. In my, this is the best description I can come up with. It's like being in a, a nightclub where everybody's really loud and you can't hear yourself think and you're trying to talk to a girl and then saying, would you like to go somewhere more quiet? That's what email is. And that's why I like it so much, which is why I also don't say, okay, I've got a new blog post. Click here to go and read it. Right. Again, I'm sending them somewhere else. And it's, you know how many people are on the smartphones now. But once you're on that, there's just distractions all over the place. It's so true. Yeah. So that's brilliant. So what, so you've got, let's go over the construct a little bit more, deconstruct the email. Yeah. So it's 600 yeah. words and it's, is it just teaching them a principle or let's talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Okay. So I said this to you before. Um, most people put too much fluff in the opening line. Like, how are you today? Have you had a great weekend? Get to the point, mate. You've got my attention. Keep the interest. It's like the classic marketing model. Attention, interest, desire, action. That's what I'm trying to get to happen in the email. So I've got your attention usually in the subject line. The subject line shouldn't give away the content of the email. I think most people, when they write an email, they write kind of what the, what the post's about. So somebody has to make a decision on whether they want to read about that or not. What I'm doing is asking a question. Like, I sent an email last night that just said, hey, hope you get this in time. I get what in time? So yeah, <laughs> then I basically say, okay, um, great ones are just questions. If I get a question from some, a, a podcast listener or a reader, got this question from so-and-so, and here's my answer. So what I'll say is, okay, here's why you should do this. Here's why you shouldn't do this. Here's what you should do to fix the problem. And then I said to you before, if you want to know how to do this, I have a product that will solve the problem. So um, what this is called a soft teaching rather than hard teaching. Because a lot of people a lot of people put out so much great content. And that this is people, some people that have followed for five years. I might have been on their email list and a podcast for five years. But the information's so good that I've never felt the need to buy anything. Uh, yep. Does that make sense? Because the free information is kind of too good. Yeah, it, it does. And there's, there's kind of this debate that's going on. Like give everything free away. Yeah. And then – and I kind of have – 
I found that when I first started out, because I do webinars, that's how we got connected. Yeah. Yep. And I would give a ton away on the webinars and my conversion rates were still good, but yep. they got way better when I took the how out and I made yeah. it about the why to get yep. people to understand. Yeah. 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 You kind of, you kind of, it, the, the, the analogy I said before was it's like, it's like I will take all of my clothes off down to my thong, my leopard skin thong. And if you want to see what's under the thong, you have to pee. It's kind of like that. So I'm still teaching you something. I'm still giving you content. And the, the, the link that I like to use or the, or the bridge from here's why you should or shouldn't do this. Here's what to do to fix it. And then I say, by the way, those are the only three words that work, by the way, or just so happens that I have this. And that's it. And it's, you know, the other thing about that with the psychology piece too, is that we're doing a disservice by giving, yeah, of I, I really feel I am because, and I've noticed the people that complain about me not giving more content, never buy, they're just yeah. whiners. Yeah. And then I, they, I don't want to work with them anyway. So yeah. I weed out the people because I, I mean, I invested and I know you did too. I mean, I invested over $60,000 in my internet marketing education. Yeah. So I want to find people like me that are going to buy and take action from what they're doing. And I love that psychology, Paul, because it's so... Dude, my emails are so offensive. <laughs> so offensive. Well, I'm not telling everybody to be offensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's kind of the way that... They're not that offensive. They're just... But, they are... If you read my emails, you would know that they're my emails. If you went on my podcast, it all, it's all congruent. It's all like, look, if you're a whiner, if you don't like investing in your education, if you don't like sounding salesy, which I hate, I'm like, dude, this is not for you. I'm, right. I'm cool with that. Right. Yeah. 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 And I think the I, I like more of the upfront brutal, you know, people yeah. that tell like it is it, yeah. it, and not so much of the internet marketing space I found is a lot of people just selling what they sell, but not actually doing what they do. I agree. So, yeah. and okay. that's where the change is. And I, I love that philosophy. So what, okay. So one more thing on this email, cause I find it so intriguing. How it's do my you come? Thing in the, it, Chris, I'll go so far as to say it changed my life. It's yeah. therapeutic. Yeah. It's therapeutic. Yeah. It, it, an email marketer never has a bad day. Yeah. That's that's so cool. I really like the daily connection piece, so I'm starting to resonate with that more. Um, my question is, though, how do you keep up with the content? Like, what, how do you, I mean, are you, I'm not a writer. That's why I podcast. This is it. This is a, that's a great question and one I get asked all the time. So, number one, if you know your customer, it's really easy to come up with content because you know what they're seeing. This is where Facebook can actually be quite useful because you can see what they're talking about. Right. Because if they're all talking about the same thing, you need to comment on it. Now, the other thing that I do is just keep my eyes and ears open. You could give me any subject and I could write an email on it and I could sell you something at the end of it. That's And, and that's just practice. So what I will say on this is on the writing thing is you won't become a better writer by reading about it or learning about it. You become a better writer by becoming a bad writer and writing yourself better. So it's just practice. But then the, on the subject line, it, it's like just it's it's kind of find a situation. So I like using pop culture. So I'll, if a mo movie comes out, I'll link the movie back to, okay, this is, um, this reminds me of something that happens in fitness. So for instance, Am have you seen this new Amazon Air thing? No, what is that? It's the weirdest thing you've ever seen. I don't even know if it's an April Fool or something. It's an, it's a, it's Amazon Prime Air, it's called. It's basically a, is it a, a service where you order something, they have it to you within 30 minutes. Oh, you mean, oh, pr is it Prime or Prime A? Oh, a it's new Prime A. Oh, A, the no. word A. A I R. 30 and minutes. And they have it in 30 minutes. Yeah. How does so that. It's like, so I could link that back to, obviously it'll be expensive, but yeah. I can link that back to, to a fitness business and say clients will pay more for a faster result. Like, I will always pay more to jump the queue. At an airport, always pay more. Yep, and there's so always going to be that crowd. That, that was something that I saw today. I saw, I was talking to a friend the other day, and they, he told me, I'm obsessed with marketing as well, and he told me that Porsche did a campaign, a Porsche dealer did a campaign where they waited until a member of their target market went out to work, okay? While they were out at work, they drove a Porsche onto their drive, took a photo of the Porsche on their drive, and then sent them said photo Written on the back, it's not as far away as you think. Ah, uh, love that. That is unbelievable marketing. So then I've, this is actually tomorrow's email. I've linked that back and said, this is about, this is called future you. So you basically, when you're writing copy now, instead of seeing, or oh, drop a dress size in 28 days, I'm like, okay, show me what dropping a dress size feels like. So that's people saying things like, you've lost weight. Nobody ever talks about this. 
When somebody asks if you've lost weight, it feels amazing. But nobody ever sells the feeling of somebody seeing that. So I describe it as in every business we sell, um, let's say we're, I'm on Unhappy Island right now, which is Fat Island, yeah? I want to get a happy island, okay? The training and the nutrition and even the weight loss is the boat that gets me to happy island. Why not screw the boat and just sell me happy island? So the feelings that come with losing weight, nobody ever sells that. So that's kind of, yeah. There's another email. Well, and it is though, and every, what you just said, Paul, all the listeners, I suggest to rewind that and listen to that okay. again. No. I've got another one for you. This because is an amazing one. It, There's a, there was a, a study done recently on a guy who'd been following these animals for years, and it turned out that the male animals sexed themselves to death. So they basically screwed until they died. Whoa. And that reminds me, that's what I say, that reminds me of... Fitness professionals who are working 14 hours a day and will be doing that for the rest of their lives. Yeah. And then I'll say, by the way, if you want to, here's some tips to get away from that. And I also have a product if you want to learn how to do it. Yeah. I d yeah. I, that's so funny you say that. I just joined a new gym and three of the guys are like, how do you do this online stuff? Like, and they didn't even know because they're like, well, I work, you know, 12 hours a day. I'm here from this to this. I'm they're packed. on the fitness business treadmill. Yeah. And, and so many other. Get off it ever. Yep. And, it, and that's just not even fitness. That's for most entrepreneurs too. They're yeah. still trading the hours it's for dollars. Busy. So this is perfect segue. So this is great. So, so, so what I like to do is I like to try to reverse engineer for people in this online space because it, yeah. I know how frustrating it is. I know how overwhelming it is. And I know yeah. how people are throwing darts kind of left and right. So the email marketing and the Facebook ads, you have yeah. to have a product first though, before oh. you can actually. Okay. Hell no. <laughs> Let me tell you a secret. Let me tell you a secret. Okay. I have been doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching for a long time now. And I am now getting to the point in my career, my life where I'm like, you know what? I want to help more people, but I don't want to do this kind of, it's still swapping time for money, kind of. It's too much work. So what I started was a, a really old school inner circle, which is a monthly newsletter, a monthly CD. That's really old school. I, I used to be on Dan Kennedy's list. I'm on a couple of other guys. I'm on a couple of other guys. We're really old school. So on Friday, I launched, on Tuesday last week, I decided I was going to launch it. Yeah. On Friday, actually on Thursday, I still didn't have any sales copy. I didn't have a website. And I still haven't written the first edition. I was been writing that today. On Friday, I have, as of today, I have 56 members at £100 a month, which is $150 a month. There is no one-to-one -one contact. And I still haven't written the first edition. Right. But that's so your What product, I'm doing is I'm selling, I am selling fresh air. <laughs> Yeah. But you're still going to have content for them to consume. Oh, yeah, I've got the content. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just like, you know what? I can spend months creating this content. Yeah. But if nobody buys it, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. So let me back up. Let me back up for yeah. a second. What I see a lot of people doing is, and I and I talk to entrepreneurs all day long. I have strategy sessions, and then I have hiring coaching that we connect uh -huh. with on. And most of them are out there putting stuff up on Facebook, putting things out on Twitter, launching yeah. their podcast, but they're not driving traffic back to a hub. And then yeah. two, they don't have a product, a signature yeah. product that gets their hook in the marketplace. Yeah. So what I want to talk to you about, and I know like I don't mean product where you spend six months creating it and then yeah. you sell it. Like, no, 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 yeah. no. I mean, like when I started with my podcasting prep system, I did a live webinar and I, yeah. I sold people into that and then I did yeah. the training live. Yeah. So for those people that are getting started, what I hear a lot of people is they, they tell you to build a community first and then start to monetize your message later. I okay. did it the reverse. I started yeah. with the product with webinars. So yeah. what are your thoughts on that with this daily email, with your process on what you're doing? Because I feel if people are going to go out there and start doing daily emails or even once a week, if they don't have products or things that they're incorporating in their business, how do yeah. they monetize them? Okay, so here's a, here's a, here's what I would do first. First of all, you've got a. I would recommend sending emails for a couple of weeks before you sell anything because you know the deal, Chris. Before somebody gives you money, they need to know you, like you, and trust you. So spend the first seven to ten days building credibility with these people. But here's a ninja strategy: every email should have a link in it. Every email. So even if it's just a link to, okay, here's a funny video about that link to the email you've sent. Because what you're doing is you're conditioning the reader to click a link that has a high return on investment. So when you do pitch something, when you do send them to a sales page, they will automatically click that link because you've conditioned them to click a link that has a high return on investment. Now, as regards to having something to sell, um, I would 
I wouldn't even worry about it too much because the, one of the keys to marketing is, is as simple as this. Find out what people want and then show them how to get it. So I give them something that they want. Like literally survey your list. Survey your list. Use WooFoo or you use uh, SurveyMonkey and just see what kind of the things you need the most help with. And then you're basically, they're selling themselves. Okay, you asked for it. There it is. Yep. Well, what are your thoughts though for the new people? That's kind of where I'm not asking better questions oh, here. That's, <laughs> a, that's a magnificent question. I like the idea of a signature product. Um, I like the idea of a low barrier to entry product and then feed people through your marketing funnel. So I would, I would come up with something that doesn't take that much work. So for instance, my next product will be the last six months worth of emails packaged into just an ebook or even I'm starting to get into direct mail now as well because nobody else does it. It's true. Everybody, that's Everybody awesome, left that market. Yep. Yeah. Nobody does it here. Uh, especially in my niche, not a single person does it in England. So what I'll do is I'll package these, these emails into a book and I will have a physical book. The physical book is free. You just pay for shipping and handling. So they pay for the print and, and the delivery. And then I've got that home address, which means I can then market to them until, yeah, they buy or tell me to do one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. So what about, well, what other tips of wisdom do you have that you get the biggest questions on with the fitness experts? Like what is the reconditioning you have to help them with with their business? Oh, that's a great question. Hmm. How do I become the premium option in my town? Or how do I position myself as the premium option? So first thing you've got to do is charge more than everybody else because that's a given. Because cheapest and best is never in the same sentence. You probably get it all the time, Chris. Which, uh, which mic should I buy that's the cheapest? What's the cheapest recording software? Okay, do you want cheapest or do you want best? Because if you're trying to sell something, so somebody says to me, what's the, you know, I use ScreenFlow and everybody's like, is there a cheaper version than ScreenFlow? I'm like, are you trying to sell something? They're like, yeah. I'm like, well, there's not a cheaper version. Same with GoToWebinar, right? I love GoToWebinar. People are like, is there a cheaper version? Because that's too expensive. Well, are you, are, are you wanting to make sales on the webinar? I know. Because um, if you are, go to webinar. I have to go on a rant on this because I get people, I, I mean, I've had even friends like complain about the prices and I'm like, this is the lowest barrier yeah. to entry business yeah. Yeah. ever. Yeah. Yeah. Ever. I mean, if I, when I went to school, I mean, I started my business when I was 19. I had to invest $4,000 just to even get started with what we were doing. And, and then, and that's like, that's even teeny, tiny, tiny, teeny, you know, for people that are having to buy a brick and mortar business. So I, I really would like people to wake up and realize this is so cost. It's so cheap. Like my, our overhead is like, I mean, yeah. excuse me, our profit is like 98% for the most yeah. part. Yep. So I just, I, I had to rant there because I've been getting emails <laughs> where people are like, $97 a month, are you kidding me? I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, that's not, it's nothing. <laughs> yeah. Do you have to connect yeah. with people worldwide? So anyway, I'm done there. The other, but, the other questions <laughs> are always, uh, it, so it's premium, so it's first thing's price. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, I don't think people will pay that. And here's my answer to that. They, you thinking they won't pay that is because you wouldn't pay that. So that's why it's so important to have a mentor because expecting somebody who invests in coaching with you when you won't invest in coaching is crazy. I almost said something more offensive there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, it's it, insane. It, it is, um, and that's where the limiting beliefs come in. So a is, coach... Mm -hmm. And people can tell when you don't think that your service... When, when, you, when you don't have confidence in your prices, people can tell. So they won't pay it. The other premium thing, and I, I've saw you do this recently, is I've actually, this is what my first edition of my newsletter is about today, is becoming application only. Because again, the confidence that you show from saying, I will not train anybody with a wallet, a pulse, and a few pounds to lose. I only want badasses on this program. So here's an application form, and the questions have to be very, the questions that are in the application form are very targeted. Um... And, and very, again, it, it just, when everybody, especially in the fitness industry, everybody else is kind of oozing desperation and they're very needy. And people just are, are not attracted to needy people that are desperate to make the sale. So losing the need to make the sale is so attractive. Like, and I'm obsessed with that type of takeaway marketing, obsessed with it, I love it. Like, I will write sales copy where I do my best to put the person off buying it. Here's what happens, people want it even more. Because they'll read it, they'll be like, well, that's not me. I'm not a procrastinator. 
I don't want whiny. Well, I'm not a whiny person. Everybody's like that and they love it. Yeah. And this is huge. This is a big thing for me because I want to help everybody. I want to help yeah. everybody, but the, you, you can't. And yeah. when you when you come out there like that, and some of it was default for me. It wasn't like I was trying to be needy. I was just trying to serve and over serve. Yeah. And yeah, what yeah, yeah. happens then is it becomes like what you're talking about. The positioning loses its balance. Yeah, and when and you take yourself back. Everybody else is saying the same thing. Everybody yeah. else is kind of they have a neediness that they, that they want to help everybody. And again, it comes, it's kind of unattractive, right? But yeah, it's a, it, it's, it's super, it's kind of almost irresistible. I find it irresistible when somebody tells me I can't do something. And especially when it comes to money, because I've gone from, I'm, I'm from the second poorest town in the UK. And when it comes to somebody telling me that I can't afford something, I will bust my ass to say, yeah, I can, I can afford that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, it's, yeah. I do. And I love that. And the positioning, like what you're talking about, what I've changed up is it really, they're making them jump through hoops and it's the yeah. better quality. They, they just want, they want it and they, they're, they're proving themselves and that's perfect because it's setting them up for success. Yeah. Versus make it the hard for them to get in, but make it easy for them to pay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. I think a lot of people make it too hard for people to pay. Yes. Brilliant. Like, just, just give me, I, I know people that won't use PayPal because they take like 2%. I'm like, dude. Dude, just people have got the credit card out waiting to give you money, and you're saying, "Oh no, just send it to my dude." Oh, that really, yeah. <laughs> that actually is so true and so powerful. Yeah. There, um, yeah. And with PayPal, I've always had a great relationship with them. Just get yeah. in touch with the merchant people there, and you're going to be fine as long as you yeah, have open superb. communication. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's a very trustworthy brand as well, right? You're kind of you're paying two percent because people trust PayPal. I'm, I'm just like I'm. Yeah, make it easy for people to pay. Yeah. No, it's brilliant. So what? What's on the what? What um? What's on the horizon for Paul Moore? What? What are some of the? Oh well, this new inner circle is kind of a big passion of mine. Just because it's it's different. Nobody else is doing it in the industry. It's a, a great way for me to leverage my time. Um, the my podcast since I learned the stuff that you taught me has absolutely exploded. I've had the best trainers in the world. The difficult thing that I found actually, Chris, was I. I originally wanted to do it on my own, just me, because I'm the expert. And I sh I'm sure I've heard you ask this question on one of your pod podcasts, actually, where it was, should I do one on my own? Or when I get other people on, does that mean that they're the expert? Or am I not the expert anymore? But anyway, it's position. what I did was I basically have a question at the start where I answer a, a podcast listener's question. So it's, it's increased my position and grown my list massively. So that's the other thing. I've got some unbelievable guests on there. And the other thing, actually, tomorrow, if you guys know what a, what a store called Harrods is in England? Uh, I'm not familiar Most with expensive it. expensive store in England. Okay. I have a meeting with those guys tomorrow because they might be putting my product into their stores. Yes. My, my green drink product, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, tell us about your green drink. Green drink is kind of like, you guys have a lot of super green drinks out there in the States. We have none in England, really. So we're kind of establishing ourselves as the, as the number one brand there. So, yeah, it's cool. And again, I use email marketing, which is very, very, nobody else does email marketing. I'm telling stories. The one I sent last week was I picked my son up from nursery, from preschool. All the other kids had snotty noses. <laughs> Snot's falling out. My son didn't Sick. have it because he drinks the greens drink. Yeah. And yeah. people love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People love that. Yeah, and it, for those of it's you that don't like vegetables. It's a very different way to sell because stories, stories and emails, I didn't even mention it. Stories and emails create connection. It's not just information. Information's boring. Information doesn't equal transformation. Stories create a connection. Once people are not in the head like you, then they will get the, they should sit on the hands because they're going to give me money if they're not in the head. Yeah. <laughs> and it goes back to what you're talking about is it's, it's sharing the story of the transformation with like being on the happy Island, like oh, get, dude, jump yeah. right to there yeah. and talk about yeah. that. But also sell, also, also talk about this. Like I said, right at the start, we're kind of going right back there now, which is cool. Talk about struggles more. Everybody needs to talk about struggles because again, that's where the person that is reading your stuff, that's where they're at. So we kind of fast forward, oh, we're really successful. We're really successful now. You can be successful too. I'm like, well, what about the bit before? Ex that, yep. Meet the prospect where they are at. Exactly. And what oh. I like about email marketing and words and things like that is they're the bridge. So the email and sales copy and stuff that I'm, that I'm in love with is just the bridge that takes the prospect to the product. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So the email just connects these people here to the product here. Email is just a perfect connector. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, this has been phenomenal. I just oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I've had so much fun. I could talk about this stuff all day. Yeah, well, I want to have you come back again for sure because this is a, this is the content that entrepreneurs, whether you're in the fitness industry or not. It's great tips. It's the nuggets that people need and the focus. And I, and I love it. It's it, This is the gems of what makes things happen. Yeah, I, can't, I can't think of a business that email marketing regularly will not work for. Because again, my main thing is that, again, I'm doing what nobody else is doing. Yeah. There's not many other people that email daily, right? Right. And no. I bet for, the, for you guys that are listening in, I bet that the niche that you're in, hardly anybody sends daily email. Hardly anybody. I've got a, a coach, a lady who is a, she's a media coach. She teaches people how to get press coverage. She emails daily. Nobody else in her niche emails daily. They email, this is what I like. This is the one that, I love this quote. Most people email when they've got something to say. Okay, so if you're really an expert, you should have something to say every day. Because for positioning, imagine this, your competition, positioning wise, your competition emails once a week, Okay. A little bit of an expert. You email every day, you become the market leader. Well, and people become – and the reason I'm so intrigued with this, Paul, is I'm not on one list that really? emails – No, 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 no. I'm on many lists. Oh, that emails daily. <laughs> that emails daily. It's always what you're talking about. It's when – and I've seen myself go into that trend too, where I just do, you know, that consistency with once a week or whatever. But what it's less than once a week. I go so far as it says you just remind people to unsubscribe. Yep. Ex- see, exact. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, so I think that's it's like, you know, when you get Chris, you know, when you get that, that text message on New Year's Eve that says Happy New Year, and you know that that person has just sent it to everybody in the yep. book. Yep. That's what like a once a week email or a once a month email feels like to me. I'm like, I know that you've just done this. And whereas a daily one just creates a massive connection and it's intimate and it's, you can get, you can just position yourself as a leader very, very fast. Yeah. So Paul, where can everybody find out about you to sign up on your list and find out how you do this magical warning, daily email? That set of warning out right now is that on my podcast, I have a no sensitive snowflakes. I just, I, I get... I get very passionate. You can see that I get very excitable about this stuff. I swear a little bit. I'm very much myself. Um, He's been very calm on this podcast. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Do not come on. So I am over at IamPaulMort.com if you want my famous daily emails. Or you can find me on... um, you can find me on iTunes as well, where I was number one business podcast yes. in the whole of the UK for a little while. Yep. You're yeah. rocking it. We'll have all of Paul's information in the show notes as well. And I might be able to pull out a bonus uh, from Paul as well for everybody. Oh, okay. I bet I get my thinking cap on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this has been great. So my last question, and I yes. love to ask, I've been asking entrepreneurs this for years, is if you had to start over today, because it comes back to that principle let's meet people where they're at. And I wish yeah. more people, I would have found out uh, this more when I first started, is if you had to start over today, you had no resources and no contacts, how would you rebuild your business? What would you do? Oh, that is a magnificent question. Because I've done so much and I've made a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. I would... Um... <laughs> this is... You've, you've blown me away with this question. Let's have a little thing about this. What would I do? First of all, I would get Aweber and get an email list started. I would, I think the first thing that you got to do is find out where your passion is. Now, I hate it when people say this. Find your passion and the money will flow. No, it won't. You need to learn marketing. I know trainers that were 100 times better than me, but still eat cat food because they don't make any money. And I'm like, they are better than me. The difference is because marketing, that's it. The, the one word is marketing. So so what I do is I, I, I find a, 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 a market or I'd find something that I would do for free forever. And then I would find a way to make money out of it. That's it. If finding a way to make money out of it would involve email marketing, no doubt. It's, it's so easy. It's fast. It's actually pretty cheap. Um, you can You can track it. That's what I like about it. You can track it. Okay, if, if this is, I can see what's working and what's not working. I don't have to pre- pay to promote posts. I don't have to do any of that stuff. All I have to do is, and this becomes less important, I have to write a good subject line and get the email open. But when you email daily, the subject line makes less difference because people are looking for your name. Whenever you write an email, it should never be from your company, ever. It should be from you. 
Yeah, that works. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, I oh my gosh, this is. I don't know if that answers the question. No, it does. The only question I have is yeah. so you you've got your email list, and I try to dive yeah. a little bit more in for this now because I've been getting some feedback from from, yeah. from listeners. Yeah. What exactly the questions coming up is? Do I build a community first, or do I start a product first to monetize? And so I I, I would am, build the list. I would build the list first, mm-hmm. um, and then I would give them what they want. And so how are you building the list though? So you would start with email marketing, but would you start would, a podcast? I would, I would, would you would drive a blog? Them, I would give them something away for, because right now I'm in a, in a nice position in that people sign up to my list because they want my daily emails. It's a very nice position to be in. Before I've created an, a small ebook or a report or a webinar where I would give away some information that this, let's, let's put it this way. I would give away something that solves one of their problems or one of the pains or, or, or some kind of pain that that person is in, I would give that away in exchange for an email address. Then I would email daily and then I would find out what they want and sell them it. It's yeah. Similar, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So the because only- here's the thing, Chris, right? When you first start with email marketing, you don't have to sell your product. Yep, exactly. You can sell somebody else's product. Exactly. Yeah, I've, I've got a girl that I've just started mentoring. She's a new personal trainer and she doesn't have anything to sell yet. So she has an affiliate link for my products and she sells my product right now. She, and what's happening is she's not that worried if what she's doing is because she's emailing daily, she's not that worried if she doesn't sell because it's not her product. So her confidence isn't affected that much. But what she's doing is she's improving at emails every single day. She's getting higher up in every day. She, and all she's doing is driving traffic to her site, capturing leads, sending emails, making sales. That's it. And then all everything that she does is trackable. She can track a Facebook ad and either either improve it, spend more money on it, or bin it and start a new one. She can on a see on a squeeze page, she can see whether it's converting or not converting and tweak and and, and test the suit. Then on her emails, she can test everything in her emails. Then when it comes to selling, if she's not making sales, if if her links are getting clicked and she's not making sales, it means my sales copy is poor. Which it isn't. <laughs> yeah, right. But but it gets you better. And the reason I keep coming back to the product piece is because that's how I started. I didn't have my own products. I wasn't yeah. like, oh, I, I, I calling myself an expert was like, what am I an expert in? You know, it yeah. took me a while to develop that. And I see so yeah. many, that's my following. A lot of people are in that space yeah. or they're already the expert and they want to rock a podcast. So yeah. the question, and I love that you can just become an affiliate. So what are the top three ways that you suggest for people to drive traffic? Because you, you create a website, but then what I find is people are putting stuff out there, but nobody's reading it. No one's signing up. So how do yeah. you drive traffic? Facebook ads for me, without a shadow of a doubt, I hate Facebook in general. I have a very bad relationship with it. I think you, somebody like me with a very, I'm distracted very easily. And I think most people are now just, you just run ads. So that's the first one. The second form of traffic would be, um, podcast. Definitely, 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 definitely. Um, and the third form of traffic would be, I think it's important that if we're driving traffic, we also have to have some, what you've got to remember is that driving traffic is interruption marketing. Facebook is interruption marketing. Even a podcast kind of interruption marketing. But what about if somebody looks in Google? Because somebody that looks in Google is ready to buy. If you are not findable in Google, then you are leaving money on the table. So what you need for me for a Google, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know anything about Google ads. We have somebody that does it forward. What I would run is I would make sure I have a blog. And guess what, Chris? Guess what's on my blog? The copy and the pasted version of my daily email also goes onto my blog. Do you think that ranks in Google? Daily content on a blog? Your your blog content will go bam. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. I heard a great quote the other day. Facebook is where people go to avoid making decisions. Google is where people go to make decisions. That's so interesting. That's huge, right? That's huge. Yeah, that that really is. Because I think about how I shop. I don't shop on Facebook. No. I never nah, shop on, on Facebook. Actually, I never money. shop on Facebook. And I usually yeah. don't. But if it's an ad, it's yeah. a little bit different. Then yeah, I'll it go, is a little bit different. It is yeah. a little bit different. Yeah, but you're still interrupting people, right? Yes. Yeah. But when I want something and I know, I'm on, I'm on Google. Google. Boom. Yeah. yeah. If I'm on Google, I'm ready to make a decision. I'm ready to spend some money. So that, those would be my three things. you got to have. And I mean, that that's not necessarily f- driving traffic. It's being findable for people that want to find you. And, th- and those people that are searching for you, they have their credit cards out. So you need to have those three things up. The, the blog, Facebook ads, and podcast. That's it. 
But again, you got it. What I what I also see is the reasons for me to give me your sorry to give you my email address aren't strong enough. I don't want a newsletter. Nobody wants a newsletter. People want a solution to the problem, so give me it. That's you've got to basically. People don't sell the free enough. The kind of thing it's free. You should get it. I'm like sell the free. You got to work harder to sell the free. Yeah. So that yeah yeah. Here's the cool thing as well that I like about daily email, Chris. You can tell I'm in love with it. Is that now your sales copy and stuff doesn't have to be as strong because your email does the heavy lifting. People are des. I said before I sold out an event. Actually, I'll tell a lie. There was a hundred people at the event. I sold seventy three places without a website, without any sales copy, just with a PayPal link in an email. Here's the truth. People didn't even know what it was. How can I tell them what it was without a website? Right. People knew it was a two-day event with me. They already trusted I, you. Yeah. It was yeah. like $200. It was, it, I mean, it was quite low barrier entry. It was $200. Yeah. But, but 73 people with, without even a website up, or a, it didn't even know where it was. There was no venue. Yeah. But they gave me money because the emails had done the work. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, cool. and I love, and I lo- and, P- and for the listeners, the podcast does that too. I just have to share this really quick. I've been getting so many people asking me to consult with me privately. They've never seen a webinar and that's, that's how I started. So I don't know for my story, but it was all webinars and yeah. then, and I used the podcast for other people's products. I wasn't selling my own stuff. And then when uh-huh. I launched my new brand, I switched it over to saying I'm a podcast expert and I'm helping people with it. Uh-huh. They're coming in left and right to have done for you product, uh, podcast uh-huh. launches and all this type of stuff. And it's because of the relationship it's, it, yeah. and it's, They've never checked, you know, anyway, I, I just, I love that. I love what you shared and, and the, just, there's so many nuggets in here. So I can't wait to get you this know, interview You know what, out. Chris, what I like about podcasts and emails is that you don't have to shout, buy my shit from the yeah. rooftop. Yeah. It's just people automatically want to buy from you. They're, they're yep. trying to give you, people are trying to give me money and I'm like, dude, I've got nothing to sell you right now. Yep. Yep. I've I- got nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I, I kind of put stuff in place because they're like, we want it. I'm like, okay, well, we'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's it's another great thing. Okay, I haven't done it yet, but give me the yep. money anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's when cool. people have that level of trust, that that's who that's who they want to work with anyway. I think yeah. people are so hungry to have this type of connection through email or through podcast or whatever the case may be, but still having yeah. the 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 positioning I, I know it kind of sounds weird because they i feel people feel like they're best friends with us because they listen or they're, yeah. they're on our blog yeah. but then we still have hoops for them to jump through and i think they appreciate it more is what i'm experiencing yeah, yeah. so anyway i this has been absolutely phenomenal paul you rock it was such a Thank pleasure you. i've had a you. lot of fun i appreciate it yes well excellent well we'll get this up and i'm gonna um I, I can't wait to share it with everybody thank you again for coming on you were a riot sweet thank you so much bye bye chris bye And I hope you enjoyed that episode. I'd love to get your feedback here for the Lifestylepreneur podcast right in iTunes. Simply leave us a five star and a review, letting us know what you like, who you're interested in hearing more from, and what topics you really want help with in your business that I can bring on those key experts to really fine tune and help you in your business and creating the lifestyle of your dreams. And I'll be giving shout outs to make sure you put your name and your website address if you want me to share that with the community as well. And again, thanks for listening. I'm so excited that you found the Lifestylepreneur podcast and I can't wait to connect with you and learn more about your business as we continue to grow this community. So again, have a great day and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you for tuning in to the Lifestylepreneur podcast. Again, I'm Chris Gilbertson, and I'm committed to bringing you top training from leading lifestylepreneurs all over the world to help you break through and turn your dreams into your ideal lifestyle. And make sure to join us at www.lifestyleacademy.com to receive VIP training from specific guests I interview on the show so that you can really easily start to implement what you've learned from listening. I know we're all busy and sometimes we don't have time to listen to the entire podcast or take notes because I'm always listening on the go. So I like to call it the lifestyle cliff notes to creating your ideal business and make it really simple for you. So those will be sent via the email list. Plus, I also want to connect with you personally and being on the Lifestyle Academy mailing list is where all the magic happens. We'll host VIP trainings once a month that we can't always bring out on the podcast with even more detailed information. And I also want to connect with you personally. I want to know what's going on in your business and what you need help with and who I can bring on to aid you in creating your ideal lifestyle. And so I'll be asking questions every once in a while that I want you to reply and I reply back to you personally. So again, until next time, wishing you 
on your way to achieving all of your dreams. Talk to you soon.